Hello, everyone. How's it going, man? Let's discuss this review season three, episode three. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I did. Well, you can say a discussion video of last night's reaction to ReZero episode three. So, I hope you guys have a chance to watch the reaction before watching this well, discussion video. And yeah, you guys have a chance to also make sure you guys remember to like the video, comment the video too, because I really enjoyed my time reacting to last night's video. And so, you can say, oh, should I say episode? You can say that I am, you know, gonna go into this video is where I just gonna dive into some of the stuff I haven't get a chance to say from the well, reaction video, and some of the stuff I want to look into more, and some of the stuff I just want to save it more to. It. So basically, don't expect me to like you know just play the video and let it go through it. But just expect me just to talk through the some of the scenes that I want to talk to. So yeah, for any new people that from you know just click on this video, yeah, this is basically what this video is about. Just discussing some of the scenes from last night. Uh, well. Um, episode and then if you guys want to see my whole reaction to it just go and watch it of course so yeah might as well just get cracking shall we so yeah here we go with the first scene the Jojo reference of Subaru drinking Etikana well her body fluids <laughs> like which part her sweat her PEE -E. so yeah you can say Subaru he just like casually says okay you know okay you want me to drink I'll drink it <laughs> aren't you just been too laid back because the fact that that is actually a, so could be poison oh my god Subaru I mean I mean he was kind of on guard though when you know Etikana introduced herself as a witch of greed and the, the word witch itself in is it was enough to trigger Subaru and yeah you can say to them uh, most of the time in this moment right here Subaru yeah he's like no, he's not gonna let, let his guard down. He knows exactly that he needs to be on guard to, on in front of a witch because you can say right here, yeah, you're so pretty that normal people I will fall out, but he won't fall for it because you no know, one Emilia he um his heart is hot his heart's to Emilia already and the fact that he's just you know being very uh, cautious of uh, it's kind of because the fact that he's a witch and you know Subaru his experience with witch is actually kind of bad because well. The Witch of Envy. I mean, it's called blessing. It's, it can be a blessing for some people, though, from their point of view. But for for someone like me, I see it more about a like fifty fifty because you know it's a blessing in terms of helping him to like you know resolve the situation by going back in time and fixing things. But you can say it's also a curse too that he had to suffer the pain. He had to suffer seeing people die, and you can say he had to go through all those like, you know um suffering just to, to fix the situation. So you can say it's a fifty fifty for me. So you can say the Witch of Envy uh is kind of like um a taboo for him if if you had to put it this way. But anyhow, you can say that he, the the fact that she's called a witch, he just tried to, okay, she's a witch, be on guard, be on guard, do not fall for a charm, do not fall for a charm. That's basically what he's doing here right now. So yeah, also before I get started to the to going through the individual witch scene from here, yeah, this is something I want to dive into, the witch scene. And so you can say, well, how do I put this? They skipped the opening ending. I was kind of annoyed from last night, but when I think about it, they, it kind of makes sense why they have to skip the opening, uh, well, the ending, even the the newest ending. Or at least we get to hear about p a bit of the ending theme, but uh, the reason, I think the reason why they skip the opening and ending is mainly because, you know, this episode is basically info dumping. Yeah, I would say this episode is so info dumping. Last night, I spent some of the moments I was like, yeah, okay, go on. Yeah, I didn't react to some of the some of the moments because there was like a lot of like dialogue moments, and it's very important dialogue. If you miss one information from a any episode of Zero, it can be confusing for the next coming episode. It's going to be like a domino effect if you don't like uh, grasp the the situation properly from like, this episode, and then next episode you just say, oh, what the hell is going on? So yeah, you can say I it, it makes sense why they skip the opening ending because you know they, they've tried their best to like fit in as many dialogues from the light novel as much as possible. I mean, I took from last night from what I can read from the comment section some of my subscribers told me that they skipped some like well i don't think it's like major um dialogue scene but jumps up but where read where you guys type it down in comment section i said oh it would be funny if i react to that dialogue but i think they trying to like, nitpick some of the important bits so i'm pretty sure they, this episode is paced quite well in terms of like you know giving us the right information to allow us to like understand what the situation is with the witch factor and the sanctuary so yeah i mean skipping the opening ending is well compensated with a lot of information being provided for us in this episode and yeah we we kind of kind of an idea what's going on with the sanctuary and the, how the history of the witch uh, witch factors and what happened to the other witches and what the why the witch of envy ate up um you know her role in this sort of like witch factor situation so 
yeah, we go through like individual witches. We got the Witch of Wrath, um, Minerva. Well, apparently, I've been told that some of my subscribers are looking forward to seeing Minerva. I've been told that, oh, yeah, Echikana is here, guy. Echikana is here. Yeah, you wife with her already. Good, uh, good, uh, good job, man, lad. You, you're a fan of her already, but, but there are more witches to come. So apparently, introducing all these witches, they will appear in sometime in the season two. I've been told that there will be more witches coming our way and there, I think there will be more situations where Subaru come face to face with them like what she's doing with, with Atikana right now uh, talk to, to, talking to them and talking about you know life and stuff information and so one of the favorite one is Minerva apparently according to some of my subscribers and well you can say when I got when you guys told me that you guys are looking forward to checking out Minerva I got curious I went on Google image type in the type in the name type in her name and then read zero of course you guys if you just type, I mean, if you actually, fun fact, if you actually type Etikana, just Etikana, uh, Etikdona, or however, however you say her name, I think I'll just call it Etikdona, uh, uh, like the Japanese way of saying it. Um, yeah, apparently, just typing Etikdona is apparently a pork, um, hedgehog, a, a, a very big hedgehog. So, yeah, you can say you need to type in ReZero after the, the name so that you won't like pop up, you can have a more specific um, search to it. So, apparently, according to which she there's a witch of um so so the minerva is, is the witch of wrath she struck people to heal them so yeah in a nutshell i, I go through the scene already from my in my own time all these witches have like a, some sort of weird title to them like the wrath um sloth and blah 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 and uh, but also the, the the term witch when you be honest guys when you hear the term witch the first thing you guys think of is evil evil because you guys because we all been cultured by the fact that witches can be one of those like evil uh, beings that could, could, you know place curses on people do um do exper uh, like um potion experiments and stuff like that but you can take take as this first witches are not all evil okay so i mean look at etikana uh, ekitana does she even look evil to you i mean she she's she can like be annoying she can be cute um very dare dare and can be very creepy like this moment right here but yeah that's Dude, that's normal, man. I like dude. I, why do you think I like Kurumi? Kurumi can be evil, um, creepy, kawaii, adorable, and very nice. And sometimes too. I mean, she did help Shido, but very nice too. So you can say Ekidana has like a mix of personality, and I like girls with a mix of personality, not just like one personality. So yeah, I can I can see why last night I was like really into Ekidana because of her well mix of personality she can like, go from one personality to another one one characteristic to another oh my god I like the balance man and yeah I can say yeah they, she may be called the witch of greed I mean the word greed itself is like a very a very like uh, I won't say bad word though but depending on how people interpret it but yeah I think I, I, I interpret more greed more of a like a more of a bad term saying because you know you're greedy and stuff like that you want things for yourself but you know in this case Ekidana wants um, you know information she's greedy for, for information and she sometimes even regret taking some of the information in so um, yeah you can say Ekidana what she's doing right now is like you know just what she wants to do is not that evil i see and some of the witches have like you know struck people heal them so not so basically witches in this v0 world is not actually evil and people actually in the, the towns people the people saying um the witch of envy is actually evil because and that kind of you know made the interpretation that all witches are evil in this world but no it's just it's just the witch of envy that pretty much spread the culture that all the witches in this world is evil and and the other um you know witches are being affected by this sort of like rumors and stuff like that and oh, especially emilia of course so yeah i just say i don't think all these all these witches are evil at all and i think they they are being mistreated and stuff uh, in terms of like mis mis like in uh, understanding about the whole um witch factor thing um, so I do wonder what happened to those witches. Are they, they, are they like in a, some sort of like a secret um, under a graveyard or something? Like you know, this the sanctuary is basically a kitana grave, um, graveyard, and her body is like somewhere in the sanctuary, maybe in the like the chamber that Super walk into. So um, yeah, since Super is talking to Ekitana right now, I, I presume that it's just her spirit, like her soul got uh, got you know it just escaped the body be before like you know uh, um which of envy as uh, um you know uh, took her power or she had to destroy her body or capture her body. So 
Yeah, I can say there's a lot of question to what happened to the witches, but I'm, we will we will see what happened to uh, like what, where are they like later in the series because I've been told that they will be coming, they'll be appearing soon. I mean, the visual art pretty much gave it away too. So yeah, really looking forward to it. So yeah, you can say uh, she just basically what Ekidana do right here, just providing Subaru with information, giving him the protection of her body fluid. Oh, should I say using the the um, the witch factor um sloth to uh, to you know just you know uh catalyze it into uh some sort of protective charm for Subaru when he goes through the trial of sanctuary. So yeah, that's some nice stuff from Ekidana. See, does she even look evil? I mean, I've been mean, kind of been warned that her she she may act like this in this episode, make you us like like her, but then late, maybe later in the series, like I've been told that later in the series, my perception of her may change because of her true and her personality, or should I say her true acting personality so yeah i'm looking i'll be won't be that shocked if she turns out to be quite evil in the end but still i'm gonna like her anyways because of this sort of like moment she's having with subaru and i just say for myself that ekidana was very um lonely i would say i can see why why she really want pest a pet um you know really want subaru to stay have a long conversation with her by pestering him to ask her many questions because you know you're sitting by yourself in this window xp world uh drinking tea by yourself um, yeah, you can say it's basically um, one of the most loneliest thing you would do in your life. I mean, Subaru has a computer, and have his like you know mangas to read in his room, so it's fine. But she only have like tea with her to drink. So you can say Ekidana, what she um, she provides Subaru information and give him like the, the sort of like the greedy greediness to want more information. And I think I think when Subaru, the more Subaru asks her, the more she gonna show her true side of things. Like literally when she was like going to this sort of dark mode when she was answering Subaru some of his questions. But in the end, Subaru had like, been very cautious. I guess you know he knows she's a witch, and she of course Subaru wants to go check out check on Amelia whether she's like safe or not. So even though if Amelia is not safe and maybe like she's dead or something, he would obviously go for the return by death. So he was really desperate to get back. So he wasn't really interested in Ekidana. And so yeah, I mean fair play for Subaru though. He's just being very cautious because of his experience with witches. Uh, but I I mean I just had to say I do love the fact how Ekidana. Been act acting so dairy dairy. I I can dude. This moment right here, oh my god! I can see Maya, the voice actor for Ekidana. By the way, she's a very talented voice actor. By the way, she voices Shinobu. That shows how talented she is already. With using that sort of like very weird accent for Shinobu, dude. Maya did an amazing job with Ekidana. Really, really change. Uh, really make her character alive. How, if I want to put it this way, like uh, when I like I saw pictures of Ekidana on Google Image, I think I think of her more of like those dark, uh, deep tone, very poker face so witches that you know just talk and uh, just provide information. But turns out that dude Ekidana, she can do a lot more than just be a witch to sit by and just provide information. She can you know pr uh, perform weird acts like this right here. Oh my god! Oh, uh, you know what I'm doing? You know I want to lose the truth of people. I want to do it. Yeah, something like that. So. Oh my god, so kawaii man. I mean she is also a voice actor for Ruler too, which means one of my favorite servants. But you can say, ah oh my god, I just say she went full Derry Derry in this moment man. I just love it. I just love it this moment. I like I really enjoy Ekidana from this. I think this is the moment where I realized that I love Ekidana as much as um as sort of at the same level how much I love Emilia. I mean it, it could be like tied um in terms of like my my waifuness for them. But well you can say she what she did right here is just trying to tell Subaru to stay longer with her because you know she's she just wants someone to talk to because she just wants a friend. It's like um like the um uh, from Justice uh, Justice League where Flash it I, I need friends. That sort of situation. She just wants someone to talk to. So I mean I kinda of feel sorry for her though because you know she finally has someone she can meet for after a long time of course. And well obviously what she said that oh my god the guys fall head to toes um for my information. If people vomit in front of me, well vomit as in like vomit as in like Badly vomiting, or maybe some sort of curse you place on them, they make it make them very obsessive with you. But well, we shall see, of course. But in the end, she just you know listen to Subaru and allow Subaru to go and meet with Emilia and giving him like the charm to protect him from the trial of Sanctuary. So and also, of course, also erase the memories of Ekidana too. So so maybe I'm not sure. Did she like purposely erase his memories of this moment with her? Mainly mainly because you no, know, when Subaru goes to the trial of Sanctuary. 
there could be a chance that you know just remembering Ekidana can make a difference. And Subaru was like, Ekidana, Ekidana, why did I hear that name before? So yeah, maybe she has a big role in this sanctuary. That's why she wants Subaru to have an upper hand and just allow her, allow him to just get on with his life. And of course, going to the trial, maybe just remembering her who she is in the trial of sanctuary can allow him to have a like shortcut to like. Um, passing the trial so maybe this is like one of the things that she's trying to prevent him from doing but yeah I think I mean at least she put a charm in Subaru so maybe the charm is uh, protecting Subaru from maybe the Witch of Envy's curse or something maybe some sort of monster gonna attack Subaru during his trial back in his like re re real life um, or back to his like uh, modern life so um, yeah I, I, we, we shall see how this charm works later in the series but I just say I love the fact how she licked her hand Oh my god, dude, I can see a lot of people are gonna meme this scene right here. Like, literally, people say, Oh, what, what is your fetish? This scene right here. Oh, uh, seeing Ekidana Eki licking her hand. That's like a new fetish, everyone. Seeing girls licking their hand. I mean, my fetish is still this stuff right here. I mean, she is also kind of stacked, too. But yeah, Ekid in, in general, Ekidana, I, I like her character, man. I really like her character. She's very, she, can, she can be like evil, she can be very um, annoying, she can be very cute. That shows the level of characteristic they have for one character, and I like characters with mixed personalities. So yeah, I just say Maya really did an amazing job with uh, Ekidana, really make her character very alive, and make and go really well with her voice too. I think her voice acting goes really well with Ekidana. I think that we have to thank the voice, a uh, sound director for like um, choosing Maya for Ekidana because you know they could actually they just randomly randomly pick a, a, a random a, a voice actor for Ekidana and it will not succeed. But so they really go well with the research on like you know the history on voice acting. So with a very mature uh, Maya voice, and we can t t change. Her voice tone to a very kawaii voice that's a perfect um, voice acting man for Akidana indeed so then we move on to Garfield man Garfield oh my god dude literally I have to be very brutally honest with you guys the only thing I see in this scene is Bakugo I mean the voice actor is Bakugo but seriously man I think I mean he can easily go for like different voice like I don't know um you can go for the one in um, the one in Soma Food Wars. You can go for the one in like oh Nishinori from Haikyu, but he has to go for a Bakugo voice, dude. Oh my god, I see nothing but Bakugo in the scene right here. Just Bakugo got reincarnated as you know Garfield and just trying to be aggressive. So yeah, Garfield. I mean, he has no intention to kill, but he just have a real intention to harm people. So you can say that that sort of voice, that sort of voice actor fits him, fits Garfield really well, being a very, a very high tone, aggressive. So they pick the right, they pick the right person, man. They really pick the right person for the the character indeed. And Garfield though, I know a lot of people are gonna go meme him for the you know Garfield the cat that likes lasagna. I mean, does he like lasagna by the way? But yeah, you can say I can. I won't be surprised when I go on Twitter and see people meme the shit out of him already. I mean, people already meme around like Ekitana already, but I haven't like seen a lot of memes around um, you know Garfield yet of course but yeah I just say Garfield first impression wise I, I think I kind of like him because of his very aggressive personality I mean him and Subaru would never get along just you guys know they would never get along because you know Subaru is one of those like kind and innocent side he's more of those aggressive side and so trying to reason with him no don't even try he would only think for himself so yeah I mean, at least they're trying to get them to calm down so that they can like, cooperate in this of you know how helping people helping them to escape the the sanctuary because apparently to escape this sanctuary you need to go through the trial of sanctuary and the only person that can do that is Emilia because she's a demi human. So and of course you know um, Godfrey can also also try the two. Roswell also tried the two. They failed. So yeah, it seems like Emilia is the last resort, man. She's the last resort. So it seems like no one can escape the sanctuary unless one passed a trial. So they basically got trapped inside this circle and no way no way to escaping. If they I think if they try to escape then um, calamity will strike them. So 
Yeah, okay. So Ram, yeah, fa any Ram fans out there seeing this scene right here is like so happy for them already. Seeing Ram appearing right here, it's just like, oh my god, Ram, we miss you so much. But I'm pretty sure when people see Ram, they're gonna get like a lot of sad memories of Ram because you know they're basically twins with, with different hair color and different personality and different eye colors. But you can say, yeah, seeing Ram can trigger some Ram fans because you say, oh my god, Ram, no. But you can say it's nice to see Ram again. By the way, guys, I'm I'm more I like Ram more than Rem because of her very slut personality yes I said it guys slut personality so yeah see <clears throat> yeah <laughs> love you have it as a report <laughs> I love it oh man just loved Ram very uh, slut personality so yeah it's got nice to see Ram again man so it seems as like, uh, Roosevelt went through hell like literally went through hell like literally this is almost like he got shot by someone so yeah, I mean, Roosevelt told Emilia not to like, you know, call, uh, um, you know, Etikana the witch of Greed, just call her Ekidana, maybe because the fact that Roosevelt had family has history with Ekidana, I mean, she could be like over 100 years old, but yeah, she since that Roosevelt family has history with Ekidana, to the, uh, so they can't respect each other, so that's why I told uh, Emilia not to call her the witch, call her by, by her like actual name, so that can show her the respect that he, uh, she deserves, not like being like the evil witch, like, uh, like you know, witch of envy, uh, Satella, but more like just Ekidana, like a normal human being. So that shows that Roosevelt has some kindness to Ekidana, or maybe he's trying to like hide something from em Emilia by hiding the fact that she's the Witch of Greed. Maybe there's more to the name of which the Witch of Greed to itself. But yeah, I have to say now they have to like pass the trial, and it seems like everyone thinks Subaru will be the be the one to go for the trial because you know he was like the hero remember guys Rem is erased from people's memories and Rem was the one that saved them from the hounds and Rem was the one that kind of helped them with the beating of the up the um, witch of bishop and stuff like that but seeing this to the fact that Rem is erased from people's memories people only see Subaru as a savior because you know he saved them he think they see him save the one that saved them from the, the hounds and he's the one who that saved them from the witch cult so yeah, you can say people call him Sama, kind of makes sense to be honest, but Subaru, yeah, being very respectful here, t telling Emilia to be the one to lead them, but everyone's like, oh yeah, okay, Emilia, oh come on man, really? Yeah, that's basically how they reacted, because you can say because Emilia, no one really um, see Emilia, I mean, Emilia they never really did much to like make people like respect her, because you now she, all she's been doing is just sitting around the castle she only like only like from season the last part season one she tried came to the town to save people from the cult before super returned by death of course but you can say emily didn't really do much to help make people like see her like a very good person because because people, people see her more like a reincarnated a person a v, um image of satella but yeah, in the end, it's Emilia. She with this very beautiful speech right here. She says she oh not doing. She's not doing this for herself. She's doing it for people, and she don't want people to be alone by not being away from being away from the family for too long. Because you know, it kind of dates kind of like relate back to Frozen Bonds because you know she was alone. She she basically doesn't have anyone until she met Pucks before she formed a contract with Pucks. So that's where she kind of understand the pain right now, being alone and being away from people. So using that sort of like um you know experience from Frozen Bond, she applied to the situation. To, and promising them that they will do whatever it takes to return them back to the family so that kind of like shows that she's doing for something for them now so they kind of sort of like respect her more from this point even the chiefs start to respect her more so yeah a fair play uh, Emilia and of, of course Ram also said that Emilia changed as a person already because not Ram doesn't really see Emilia as a person that you know go out and do stuff like this but yeah maybe because you know thank you Subaru and stuff like that she's she's becoming more confident now this shows character development guys I, I can be told that this season 2 is going to be all about my girl Emilia growing as a person and this is the one the first step man this is like one of the first things that we can um, I see from this episode that shows growth in Emilia and of course she's trying to protect Subaru from Garfield too that also shows some, you know, Emilia growth too. But you can say, seeing Emilia certainly not sticking up for the townspeople, doing it for them, shows that she's willing to do whatever it takes to like make it, give, um, have the trust on her and giving, uh, making them feel more confident that she can do the task. And well, in the end, indirect effect, they're gonna support her for being the king, next king. So. Yeah, very looking forward to, to seeing, you know, Emilia going through the trial until the fact that, she, you know, she she kind of like fainted and Subaru in the end had to take on the trial itself. So the the, the whole set, the whole 
chamber reacted to Subaru maybe because the, there's a witch inside of him the witch is a teller inside him that's why it, it reacted to uh, Subaru and now Subaru had to like take um to take on the trial to overcome his past face your past so yeah face your past so it can go two ways so it, one Subaru you know, kind of forgets all his all his time spent in the V Zero world, and he trying to like you know pe uh, go through his life again and trying to overcome his life with his like only only his memories from his time before go, uh, got Isekai. Or he has all the memories with him, um, in, you know, from V Zero, and then he trying to like go through his life with with um, both memories from his real life and his time spent in the in the Isekai world, and try to overcome maybe his bullying from his school or maybe overcome some. So like think uh, regret that he been holding uh, holding back for a long time, or maybe he tried to like, fight some sort of things that is like um, torturing him in this sort of trial. So it, it can go anyways, but we shall see from next episode. But from what I can guess, it's actually it's gonna be more of a second thing where Subaru will have all these memories and then he tried to like combine both all, all the experiences he have to like overcome this trial of facing his own past, which is most likely gonna be some sort of bullying maybe. I, I'm pretty sure some some sort of like bullying is related to this issue right here, like you no know, Ishigami, like Ishigami guys. Th uh, th I think this is gonna be some sort of like Ishigami trial, like you know overcoming his past and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I have to say, Subaru's father is so buff, man. <sighs> oh my god, I have to say that his father, man, from first impression wise, very eccentric. I mean, I can see where he inherited that from. So yeah, not bad. His father is very bulky <laughs> but yeah not bad episode i say lots of lots of information uh dumping the sanctuary basically the grave ekidana and basically it's like a trap for people and no, no one can see it until they pass the, the trial and it seems like the trial gonna be a make gonna be a very hard from what i can see but i'm pretty sure super gonna pull it off though but maybe require two i think the, the trial will last two episodes from what i can see but yeah i'm not i mean i i'm looking forward to see what sort of interesting suffering so super goes through during this trial but well other than that yeah not bad episode we introduced like new characters ekidana i can take it take this she's a waifu materiality it's, she's like easy become anyone's waifu if no one likes rem if no one likes emilia everyone if there's like neutral people from after season one which is kind of rare to be honest dude i think more people like would love Eki, ekidana more because of what she, how she like sort of portray herself in this episode so either she she whether she's a waifu material, mm, yeah, I can see, I can see her. I mean, obviously, I I kind of like her already. I just say sorry for Emilia for the time being, but well, I I mean, it's not wrong to like her though, because I mean, anyone can change taste. Yeah, that sounds very bad though. But you can say people, you can you know, seeing the fact that you know the fact um that Ekidana is such an adorable character, I can see many people start to waifu her already, and I can see the fact that she can one day just capture my heart fully. But we shall see with her hidden personality, of course. Okay, so that's enough for me today. So hope you guys enjoyed this um discussion video. Give a like, enjoy this video, subscribe to the See you guys in real time. See you guys then.